Hi, everyone. Um, we are excited to talk about data modeling surround sound. Um, so I will kick off with intros. I am Yeri Kumala, and I work as an analytics engineer um, at SeatGeek. I've been in the analytics engineering space for a little bit. Uh, and one fun way that I use data in my personal life is to track all these books that you see behind me. I'm a big fan of books, and so I have a little app, and I can tell when they were published, um, if I've read it or not, the theme, and all that good stuff. So that's one of my fun facts. I'll hand it over to Phoenix. And hi, everyone. I'm Phoenix Malisi J, and uh, all my books are not behind me. They're in front of me, but I need, I need that app. Um, I also work as an analytics engineer, and uh, my fun fact is that uh, back in my uh, data masters, I made a, a tableau visualization of all the different Pokemon colors based on their like different types, type one, type two, and like did an analysis on that. So that's my fun fact. All right, and then we will uh, dive in. Um, so we mentioned who we are, who we are. We are analytics engineers. Um, in the chat, we'd love to see um, who are you? Are you a data analyst, analytics engineer, data engineer, other uh, team lead? Uh, let us know. But this talk is about uh, data modeling, and it's for all of the people trying to create a shared understanding of what data modeling means and ensure that we can work effectively across all the different teams. So this talk is for really any of those, data engineer, data analyst, analytics engineer, and if you're trying to create that shared understanding. All right, and so we're going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about why this really matters to us. So uh, Phoenix and I found ourselves talking about this as analytics engineers in our world. And we realized we're both passionate about this topic because most analytics engineers are coming from very different industries or backgrounds. Some of us have like foundations in concepts of computer science and data, which is not me. I came from the public health space. And then some others also have a very different understanding of what data modeling is and have only had exposure to that based on tools like DBT, right? And so that also has shaped kind of how we talk about data modeling. Um, so we wanted to make sure we add a little more clarity and trying to make sure we understood what it looked like in our role with the hopes that it would help us get a better foundation as analytics engineers, also create more effective collaboration across our teams and just kind of um, be sharper in how we talk about it and make sure we are sharing using the same language and thinking of it in the same way. So that's really where all of this began. It began through a lot of these conversations one-on-one um, and Phoenix had even more conversations, so she can speak more to that, but um, yeah. Yeah, so we want to talk about how like data modeling and how we talk about this will help. And so as Yeri mentioned, um, you know, we talk about data modeling with DBT, um, but that's not enough. So um, there's, you know, these five different steps that we talked through on some of our data conversations. Um, and do you want to kick it off, Yeri? Yeah. So um, in this slide, you'll see us talk a little bit more about um, why we think it is useful to talk about data modeling, define it in your work, and think about it outside of just this concept of tools. So if you haven't don't have a foundation in data engineering, maybe this is not something that you're grounded in. Um, and I speak for myself, right? That's my, the experience that I come from. And so one of these things is I when we were talking about this, we we're really digging into like, why is this useful? And one of these is thinking about it and really understanding the business requirements. So later we'll talk a little bit about uh, defined data modeling in the way that we have learned more about it. But one of the big pieces of our work is making sure that we are building um, data assets that are as useful and impactful as they can be. But to get there, we need to make sure we understand the requirements, right? And we understand what the business needs, which is what analytics engineering is all about. So think about it. It's an opportunity for you to really think about uh, reducing the amount of change that you have to create when, by defining your requirements really clearly, you know, you reduce the changes that you have to make down the line because you have a clear understanding of the context, the use case, and you're really thinking about how the information flows and how people use it. Um, 
you start spending more time understanding your stakeholder and the types of questions that they are trying to answer. So really sitting in and understanding what is most important to them, right? Why is it most important? How do they use the information that you provide them? Do they have the same understanding that you have of the data environment, what they need and how they need to be thinking about it? And understanding data modeling allows you also, in being able to have conversations about it and uh, ensuring there is clarity among the team, it also helps you like choose the right data modeling approach. And so um, one thing I've come to learn through experience is there are many different approaches to data modeling or what it means, right? And that's why we keep emphasizing, are you speaking the same language? Are you thinking of it in the same way? Are you coming um, from the same context and understanding about what data modeling is? And uh, with that, in me with choosing the right data modeling approach means that someone needs to have an opinion uh, about how information needs to be organized. And it means you need to understand your data infrastructure. Uh, so what tooling are you using? How is your data stored? Um, how do you worry about things about cost and efficiency, right? All these different things maybe that you don't always think about, but understanding what approaches resonate with your organization are essential. And uh, so when choosing the right data modeling approach, the way I think about it now is like, how should the information be organized? Um, and is it going to be, are you working with graph models? Are you working with um, relational models? Like trying to think about what's the relationship of your data? Um, so I really emphasize the first two um, and I'm gonna pass it on to Phoenix to dig into the others. It's a perfect segue because you recommended from your vast library, the book, The Fundamentals of Data Engineering. Uh, so if anyone's read it, feel free to like pop in the chat, whether uh, it's a resource that you've used, whether um, you've appreciated it, if you, ever, if you have any other resources that you found helpful. Uh, but that was one for me and it's called The Fundamentals of Data Engineering. So um, in there, they talk about uh, data modeling in that sense, but I find that to be a helpful approach for um, everyone on the team to know and to be aware of, and we'll get into a little bit more of that later um, as to how the different skill sets help each other grow. Um, but essentially the idea is that when you're modeling your data, you want to follow the flow of your, like, your organization's like, natural data flow, right? It's not necessarily trying to um, like plug and play some sort of like uh, perfect system. There's no perfect system. There's exactly like what would, uh, could work for your company and just finding the flow that works best. Um, and so uh, in addition to designing those effective data models and having tools and resources to help you follow that natural flow, you also want to be able to effectively maintain those data models. Uh, and that's a place where um, understanding the, the version control, the testing, the documentation. I know anyone that works with me is constantly hearing that uh, like documentation, documentation, because it really is key. It's key for um, your teammates being able to help you. I know that a lot of uh, data teams encounter the issue of the like data team of one or a data team of two. Um, but when you are trying to scale and grow, you really need to be able to have that uh, documentation so that others can pick up where you left off um, onboarding new team members, right? As well as um, being able to understand the key decisions over the history of the, of the company over time. And uh, as you're also you know, learning about the history uh, of your community, of your um, you know, work history, you also want to be able to collaborate in real time, not just the history of the past, but in the real time with other teams um, and those different skill sets will allow you to look at, you know, cost effective measures uh, from like the physical standpoint. Um, analytics engineering has a lot of the modular building and that way you can collaborate with other teams and learn where your models might overlap with different teams and different, um, you know, you don't want to use different logic in different areas. You want to try to use the same logic where you can um, and working with like, you know, the data analysts, for example, uh, to um, understand that business context if they have the closest relationship with the stakeholders. So, um, yeah, definitely want to understand data modeling in different places. 
Um, and then, so we come to the, the defining, what we talked about briefly there. Um, so conceptual, logical, physical. So conceptual, focusing on identifying the business entities and relationships. Um, and this is where the data analysts will help come in with the uh, business outcomes. Uh, logical, focusing on the, uh, the business requirements that Yuri mentioned earlier. Optimizing for querying and analysis. Um, and the physical uh, implementation from the data engineers usually, um, the storage indexing, partitioning, to really make things as um, you know cost effective as possible. Um, so yeah, these are some of the definitions to help us as we talk about now our theory. And so what does that really mean for us, right, as analytics engineers? Uh, part of why also, um, Phoenix and I started talking about this was also, it depends on what kind of team you're working with, right? Is it a large team? Is it a small team? Are you, um, do you, are you resourced in a way where you have people who are data engineers and data analysts and also have analytics engineering? Or are you in a space where you only have analytics engineering? Um, so we started talking about what does data modeling, where does data modeling really start? right, in theory, and who really gets to decide, who gets to make the decisions around how you're going to approach it and how you're going to organize the information. A lot of us um, join places or like start in a place where you're either starting from scratch, if you're, that's wonderful, right? If you get to start from scratch and have a strong opinion and understanding and foundation in this, I'm like, whoop, kudos. Some of us don't, or you, uh, you join teams that already are, are working with uh, already existing infra infrastructure and system and approach to data. But there's this assumption that just by digging into the repo and digging into what's around you, and sometimes the documentation that's available to you, that you will understand what um, assumptions were made, what uh, uh, how people were thinking about the data, how they were defining their process, and how they think about data modeling. And so when we said, where does data modeling start in theory? For us, it's like it starts with everyone that has a role in data sitting in the same room and agreeing to how they want to think about it. Because you need to agree on how you organize this information for uh, to make sure it's as useful as possible. So it's it's something that works for your your business stakeholders, the people who are making decisions. You're making sure that they understand what's available to them. And also the people who need to make sure that the system is as efficient and effective as possible. So we're also like limited by resources or infrastructure and systems. And if you don't have a good understanding about that, you don't know um, how by having certain models that are well optimized, how that, when you scale, how the impact that it could have, right? So almost having these tech debt conversations up front, if it's going to be tech debt, how are you going to tackle it? How are you going to think about it? And so data modeling starts in theory with everyone at the table. And, um, and it could be, as often <laughs> as needed, but it has to be something that the opinion, like the approach is clearly articulated and there's a clear understanding of what you want the relationship between your data points to look like and how you want the data to flow, how do you want it to be optimized, how do you want people to think about it and how do you want people interacting with it? Mm -hmm. So um, I say this in theory, right? Like that's the ideal state, uh, but what has that looked like for us? Yeah. Um, over to Phoenix. In practice, uh, things are very different with every company and you, in understanding, um, you know, earlier you mentioned, Yeri, like someone has to have an opinion. I kind of have seen it the other way, the other way around. Everyone has an opinion. Which one do you go with and which, how do you collaborate and negotiate? Um, I know that in practice, uh, one of the shifts that we made in our company was that uh, we started, rather than seeing other data teams as stakeholders, uh, we started looking at each other as partners and having data partnerships. And rather than looking at, um, for as an analytics engineer, having data analyst stakeholders, no, we're partners in this. And when we are talking about data modeling, we look at the, um, you know, how do we tackle this together? And uh, and and Ziska, um, I love that question. Who should own it though? That came up in all the meetings. It did. Who's owning it um, in practice? We have it that like certain tickets and work um, were owned both like between the partnership. So the idea is that um, it's not necessarily 
like my responsibility than your responsibility. It's our shared responsibility that some of the tasks might be done in tandem and some of the tasks might be dependent on one person working and then the other. Uh, but that was an essential conversation. So in theory, uh, it would be ideal to also have data engineering as part of this kind of trifecta partnership and any other roles that are you know niche and not necessarily involved, but or sorry, not necessarily mentioned on the screen, but definitely involved. Um, but the idea that the partnership means that we talk about the the skill sets in advance, that data engineering can let us know that hey, this decision might be cost uh, might ha uh, have a hefty cost. Then we know what to do. It's like, and then the data analyst can say, oh, okay, we know. Uh, that this, um, if we make this decision here, it's not actually going to be relevant to the team. We need to make this other decision. And then as analytics engineer, I can say, you know, um, I know that we've been doing it this way all this whole time in this, the history I can see in the documentation, we've been doing it this way. But what we need to do uh, to make this more modular, to make it more sustainable for the future is to actually shift around these CTEs and to start to link the data in a different type of way. So that's been some of the experiences from my perspective. Um, and feel free to share any perspectives in the chat about this. Thanks for your participation and uh, any thoughts, Yuri? Yeah, no, I, I'm just plus one to a lot of um, what Phoenix said. We, What I've loved about our conversations as well and with some other folks that we've gotten to know is this idea of it's um, conversations, right? It's like, where are these conversations happening and how do we do it in a way where they feel productive, but we understand the handoff and we understand how we're take, like learning from, like getting feedback from different perspectives. So not just our little bubbles. Um, uh, my company, what's really cool is they have all those different roles, uh, roles, right? They have data engineers, they have like data analysts. So they, and they're embedded in different like um, business units. So it's also fascinating to see, this was my, it's my first time being in a company where it's so well resourced in that perspective. But what you realize is also everyone can flex across like the data pipeline, right? Like based on your comfort zone. So your title doesn't mean that that's all you're limited to. And that's also when you start realizing the importance of that communication. How do you talk about it? How do you um, learn from each other? How do you make sure that there's a shared understanding how you want to approach it and tackle it and think about efficiency? Um, things that I'm learning a lot about is more like the data engineering piece of things, right? Like how data engineering has been discussed over decades, right? Like the, this, these are not new concepts whatsoever, but when you come from a different industry and you learn about um, these concepts only as you're doing, you realize you need to also understand the flow that exists within your, your organization and know who you need to tap to like, foster those conversations. So you're like, I want clarity on like, what, what are our rules of engagement for defining these across like our in, entire data system and architecture and how should we be thinking about it? And how do we make sure that it's something that's ongoing and documented so that if someone like me who comes in and loves documentation and is trying to understand what our opinions are of things, especially when everyone has opinions, <laughs> um, is like, how, you know, how do you do that consistently? Um, so yeah, yeah. the practices look very differently. Mm -hmm. And then tackling onto that, um, I loved what you said about, you know, everyone has an opinion. Um, it made me think about how um, additionally understanding the data advocates that if one company, uh, you know, is more uh, code and technical, technically focused, maybe more focused on the data engineering side, um, then you need a, an analyst advocate to focus on that conceptual piece and understanding. Um, I remember seeing, um, you know, uh, I think it was a meme <laughs> along the lines of creating like the most uh, per, like the most performant um, uh, like user experience that they could like press all the buttons that they could ever want. But like in actuality, when they pushed it, no one knew how to use it because it was a little bit too technical and there wasn't enough of a connection to like the business requirements in that sense. Um, and then there's the other side where there can be, you know, a lot of great like uh, business ideas, but if you don't quite have uh, a clear understanding of how the data is flowing through, um, you're not able to capture it, right? Then that's also its own risk. 
So being able to advocate for each uh, piece of this uh, from the various uh, logical, conceptual, um, and physical aspects of data modeling uh, also comes from understanding your company's um, just dynamics across, right? Like who's currently making the decisions. So this isn't necessarily about who should make the decisions, it's understanding who's currently making them and being able to advocate for what might be missing from this like very delicate balance, really. Um, and I know we talk about it in this theory, but when we start to see in practice more of a balance, uh, that's where we really see like the most data-driven um, companies and better outcomes for, for everyone. Exactly. And so we would love to hear from you all if you had um, questions or thoughts or what it has looked like for you all in practice. We have a question here. Yeah. All right, Francesca. So is yeah. How do you engage senior state? So there's the piece of is who owns the design, and I think that's where this conversation really stemmed from. A lot of times, nobody's really owning the big picture, um, which is going to build off of, I think, Lindsay's question about how to engage senior stakeholders. Um, I like to zoom out and try and think of like the role of data is supposed to drive something, right? Like um, it's supposed to be um, leading to innovation and allowing us to answer questions that we're not used to answering and standardizing how we think about. Um, our uniqueness as a business or as a company, whatever that is. And so whoever owns these big questions in the company, and this is why the business stakeholders is also essential in this piece, is like, how do you map it out? And how do you roll everything back up to that big picture, knowing that data is a big part of this puzzle? Um, I have wrestled with this idea of like who owns what and how you piece it together. I do not have an answer. But one thing that I have found helpful is that when you do have planning, like really strategic planning conversations that are really focused and everyone knows what you're focusing on. It's like whatever piece you're working on should be rolling up to that. And that's like top priority. So when you're thinking about um, optimizing your data architecture and data system, it's in, in purpose of maybe these set of core tables or core data assets to run as smoothly of the highest quality that, you know, for what has been built right, like to answer a certain set of questions. Um, starting like starting to exercise that muscle of like, how do you make sure that everything's always well aligned? Um, it is not an easy thing to do. And I don't think I, um, I've always seen it done really well. I go back to sometimes my public health roots and think about logic models that we would build out when thinking about programs and how everything needs to flow to these outcomes that you're trying to generate. And so I try to think of it when I think of data, I think of it in the same way. And when Phoenix and I were talking about it, when we initially talked about it, it's like Phoenix was talking to all these different analytics engineers and trying to figure out like, what does it look like, right, in practice? Uh, because we're all experiencing it all differently. So all that to say, I'm not answering the question necessarily, but I'm telling you like what, what I would like to see. Um, and hopefully that always brings in senior stakeholders just by the nature of what you're trying to accomplish. And then on the ownership piece, I see when we have the, like something, let's say something's breaking or just, you know, there's a bug somewhere. I know that in practice, what happens is that, um, let's say that I'm looking at, it's like something in uh, with customers and things are breaking. Um, I can speak to my, uh, uh, like the partnerships in the data analyst role and to be able to say like, hey, is there some sort of like business context reason while I look into the the code itself, whether something's just breaking temporarily or whether 
Um, and I know that I've had the experience where then that shared responsibility meant that I could hear like, oh, yes, there was a decision that was made um, that I wouldn't necessarily hear about uh, that makes my code no longer like it doesn't work as well with this new decision that was made. And then involving senior leadership is to say, hey, that decision that you made, you know, last week, last month or, you know, trying to get ahead of it, saying to senior leadership that when you make a change without involving um, you know, the data analysts that have the business context, and I don't have the that context to be able to change the code in advance, something will break, and that's uh, that's going to have um, cost impacts on our company. Senior leadership, they will often listen to the costs. So really, like um, writing that out in a in a financial way uh, really helps to uh, advocate for that point. It helps to share with C-level leadership that data isn't an afterthought. Sometimes that is something to understand that others will see data as an afterthought, not realizing that there's um, a lot of money involved with not knowing ahead of time. So talking about cost savings, talking about um, ways to um, you know, reduce um, like time, because time is money, so yeah, definitely tying it back to the tangible outcomes. Um, and then question here. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Yuri. Oh, no, I was going to say, and I think Andy also asked about the balance between doing something well versus doing something fast. I think every single one of us can talk about that. Um, I can jump in really quickly and then pass it on to you, Phoenix. I'm, um, so this is, funnily enough, Taylor and I are going to talk about this um, tomorrow as well, but I... I believe in slow analytics, <laughs> um, well thought out. We are now operating in, there are very few spaces where it's always an emergency, let's put it that way, um, where you need it right now. Um, and we like to think that everything is an emergency because we can execute, meaning that when someone gives you a question, a lot of us know how to tackle it. So you can see the question and you already start thinking about how you're gonna solve it based on what you understand of the data and uh, can jump right in. The part that we don't often slow down enough on is like, for what? And not meaning that they can't tell you um, what they're gonna use it for, but it's like, is it going to have the impact that you think, that you, they even think it's going to have? Because we've all built things that are not as useful as we anticipated. And so it's kind of like that push and pull. Like, how do you have those conversations where you're really thinking about this, big resource that you have should be used as strategically and as impactfully as you can, which means you need to slow down, right? Like you need to think of what is good. What is, what are the things that really clue you into that you're going the right direction that makes, that sets you apart from the rest versus just reporting for reporting uh, is my thought, but not easy to define. Not easy to define at all. And thank you, Christina, that question. If I got this to you today, how would you change what you're doing? Oh, and how like you bought growth this week? That needs to be like on a shirt. <laughs> it needs to yeah. be like on my desktop, on everyone's desktop. Uh, I love that. Um, and the slow analytics concept. I remember like I first heard um, like move slow to, to move fast. Mm -hmm. And that phrase, it really does make sense. I think sometimes you have to point out to stakeholders as well like okay if if nothing's going to change today right then you gotta really understand that and also what people don't see is that you might deliver on something really quickly but if it's if it breaks down and if the company doesn't use it anymore in a week that's actually going slower um that slows down the entire um like uh flow of everything that you're doing to have to restart something um so thinking about the restart uh costs of time and money so thinking about how um, as we're, you know, let's say something, you build something and then you have to um, go back and like change it all over again, that too, right? Like every time you're making all of these changes, it's, it's slowing down on the business. So really got to slow down. Exactly. Um, you, we love to talk about these things, uh, right, Phoenix? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on LinkedIn, on uh, various Slack channels, um, and we are 
I'm definitely very happy to talk about these concepts that I wrestle with and try to make sure that I embody in my work as best as possible and keep learning from others as well. Uh, so I'm thankful for like being able to do thought, thought partnership with so many amazing people in this industry. Yeah, we just posted both of our uh, LinkedIn uh, in the chat. So feel free to add us and connect with us. Great chatting with you today. Yes.